welcome to my channel Haley Marie Vintage. Today I am going to be showing you my sewing pile. So these are all the projects I've worked in I believe in the last month or so. Um, I've been very busy um, sewing. Um, I sew when I get anxious and it helps me feel clearer and more focused and less anxious. So I feel like this is just like a pile of anxiety maybe <laughs> um, but that's fine because um, I'm actually really proud of a lot of these pieces um, I've definitely noticed that I am getting much better at sewing and so I'm excited to show these to you and I'm definitely like taking the time to try to learn some new things so first we'll get started with this really cute strawberry gingham skirt with it's a border print this is the first border print I've ever worked with so this was super fun. I only gathered as much fabric as I had. I only had two yards to work with so this isn't as like floofy as I maybe really like but I loved the border print and I thought it was going to make a really cute skirt so I went ahead and did that. So that is item number one and this one fits really well. I'm getting better I think also at fitting on myself which is very exciting. Next up is my least favorite garment but I still think there's a lot I can recover from this. Um, so oh, let me see this is gonna be really hard for you guys to see what it looks like like not on my body but as you can see this has kind of like poofy sleeves it has some side like gathering like the front is all flat and then all the gathers are on the hips this is a early 1940s pattern it's also a fabric that has like a viney embroidery on it so this is really cute it just needs some adjustments so with the neckline I had never done like a neckline where you just cut straight down and then you just like sew and you kind of maybe freehand it and maybe my problem was that I kind of freehanded it. Um, so I really like the silhouette of this dress. I just think the neckline needs a bunch of work. The neckline is not the best. It doesn't lay right so I think that'll be something I look at redoing but I do love this dress otherwise the sleeves are the right length for me and I rarely find sleeves short enough or long enough or whatever um, and then I just really like this fabric. The other thing I didn't know when I was working with it is this fabric is actually fairly sheer um, so I really need to learn how to do French seams um, because these days I do have quite a few fabrics that are fairly sheer so I need to kind of get it together on those but I did also do a different type of since this was a 1940s pattern I decided to not do a zipper and instead do the plackets with the snaps so I did that it was fine I think I just prefer a zipper in the way a zipper looks but I wanted to try a traditional 1940s way of fastening since zippers haven't really been around that long when you think about all of history so uh, I tried that um, I think I am gonna try there's a run like a version of this dress in cotton so I'm gonna go ahead and try that one before I work work this dress into any newer or like nicer fabrics um because this was like just a two dollar yard fabric and i want to do another run on a cotton that was two dollars a yard and kind of try to get a little bit more honed in i'm working my way up from like kind of least favorite makes to more most favorite makes so next up is another um more like rayon or crepey garment um i just I, sewing with rayon is really hard i do really like this garment i haven't quite found the right bra to wear with this garment and I think there's a chance I go back in and I make the straps thicker so I can have more bra variety. But it has these cute little tulip pockets. Um, I just need to get better about taking my time with rayon and like I said, just doing the French seams because even with when they're pinked, um, these seams are just um, really messy and like this on the inside. And I want to make better quality garments than that. But I do still think this is really cute. And I'm still really proud of it and I will wear it a bunch this summer and I just I love this fabric and I learned how to kind of like sew curvy lines again this I would just say is not like the best work ever because I'm still learning but I am still really proud of it because this was a pretty hard garment to make next one I'm also really excited this is my first time working with a pattern where I need to like really focus on the seams matching and I think I did overall a really good job on this garment there's just one mistake on it for that like for the seam matching which is regrettable but because it's like the most important part but this is the garment um it's made out of like a light upholstery fabric so it's kind of like a really stiff cotton um i matched things i didn't quite calculate the fact that if i had the pattern going upside down it would then be kind of inverted but i think it still looks really nice um if i when i do this pattern again i'm gonna take up the, the waist by 
I think about a half inch to an inch because it's a little bit low but not horribly and then um, I actually overstitched all of my other patterns before this have never mentioned overstitching so like the stitching here um, Evelyn Wood has a really great video she just released on it and why it's important and it happened to coincide with around when I did this garment which actually mentions overstitching so now I overstitch all my garments it's just a step that I think in the 1940s 1950s patterns they assume you know that you should do it um, and I did not know that so I've learned how to do that and it makes such a difference on necklines um, and then the last piece here I think is really cute is oh a little bit too low is this bow back here I sewed the little bow there that was in the pattern and yeah I also love that this is a low back dress for the 50s not that low back now um, and then the one piece that I did cut a little bit off the pattern is unfortunately the main bust piece um, I swear I had it right and then I tried it on at the end and it's just a little bit to the left I believe and it is what it is. I'm still really happy with this dress. I think it's super flattering and I love wearing it and it makes me feel really good. So all things considered, not too bad. I also think I'll take it in by about like a half inch next time as well as taking the waist up. Um, and all of those things are just things I'm learning how to adjust garments as I sew more. Um, I think that it just takes a while to kind of learn how to fit or like for me, I can pretty much guess that almost any 1950s pattern I need to like shorten the waist by about an inch because usually they hang just about an inch below my natural waist or where I like the type like the narrowest part of my waist to fit so that's just like stuff that I'm learning and I think that you especially learn the first round through a pattern because all of these patterns were the first round through them next up I think this turned out really well it's a actually matching skirt and top set that I pulled from different pattern sets I'm going to go ahead and list all the patterns I use down below so you can go and try your luck on Etsy. I think the most modern pattern out of these was um, one from 1957, so it's going to take a little bit of hunting to find them, um, but I do think all of them were super cute. So this is like a little peasant-y, kind of like scrunched sleeve blouse um, with the buttons in the back. This is my first time making the buttons in the back. I think this is, again, just so cute. Um, I love wearing this and I'm excited to wear it and I made a matching skirt with it. This is also a 1950s pattern, kind of that gypsy tiered um, layered skirt. Um, this actually is a full, is over a full circle skirt, which is pretty crazy. Um, this one I actually did screw up. I only cut two of each piece of like each of the rectangles and I was like, how is this going to like tear up? And then I read and I was like, oh, one was two, one was four, and then one was six. And that's how that works so learn my lesson on that one the other thing I haven't added and I'll show this again when I do add it is I plan to add trim along these like gathering seams I have some really beautiful like white sequins that like glint kind of this color of this fabric um, the other thing I'm just kind of learning and still figuring out is my closures and my plackets overall they're pretty good but I don't always like get the zipper all the way to the top I'm still kind of figuring that out, so that's like another aspect that I feel like I still have a lot of learning, but I'm excited for my first top skirt set. It looks great as a dress, and then they look great in other pieces, and then yeah, it's my first overly full circle skirt, um, and I think it is fantastic. We are to my last piece. This is by far, I think, my most favorite piece I've ever made. So this I made out of upholstery fabric that's fairly heavy weight. It actually kind of mimics denim, which is why I love it for this piece. Um, so this is a 19, I think it was a 1952 pattern, but I'd have to double check. And it's kind of like a little overall coverall skirt thing. Um, so I did some mismatching buttons here. Um, I think these are so cute. And then the back are also two different colors of buttons. I was really intentional on my stripes and making sure my waistband went opposite of my skirt and then my little shoulder straps went opposite of the top and with the waistband and this is just so stinking cute this is like my favorite and it reminds me of overalls just like more sophisticated however this is really hot to wear so this will be a fall garment um, I'll wear it with like this blouse and like a raincoat in the fall um, but I love all the colors in it I love how it's almost rainbowy and I just I think this piece is stunning and then yeah because I made it with upholstery fabric and it's kind of denim like it just holds its structure really well 
Um, this is a pattern that I believe called for a mid, a light to mid weight cotton, and I actually like it with this really, really heavy cut like coverall type feeling of fabric. So yeah, I'm super proud of this. And the other exciting thing, you will see the back of my bound buttonholes, unfortunately, um, is the, what do you call that, the bib? The bib um, buttons out, so then this can also just be a normal skirt, where you would have the buttons on the back showing, um, but otherwise you wouldn't know it was a coverall. Oh, and it has pockets. And I actually did a really good job with these pockets. Actually, most of these pieces have pockets, but these pockets I feel like look extra nice because all the other pockets I've ever made are my own pattern that I cut, and these ones were designed with the thing, and so I just feel like they look like a little bit extra nice because they were designed to come right out of the waistband, and since that hips right, it like is perfect. Um, and yeah, and then you can see it has the three buttons in there to like button in the bib. But I think I'm going to use this pattern a ton. Um, I'll make some lighter cottons for summer that I can wear with like sheer blouses. Uh, and then I'll probably make some more stuff out of upholstery fabric because this pattern just like, it was great. It was great for upholstery fabric. And I can find upholstery fabric so cheaply that if I have a pattern that like works awesome for it, I'm going to do it. Um, and I also really like this pattern because if I had a friend who was larger than me who wanted a piece like this, it would be pretty easy for me to convert measurements. Um, this is a really basic garment. Um, once you know how to make it, I feel like you can kind of make it in any size and know how to scale it right. So yeah, this was all the things that I learned. Um, I, feel, I feel like I'm just continuing to grow in skill and become a better seamstress and a better garment maker. And I think there is a world where I no longer buy clothes. Um, actually, that's not true. I love thrifting too much. But I think there is a world in theory where I could not buy clothes. And I think I will probably not be buying much high-end vintage anymore because I can really sew it myself and it's way cheaper. And then it like fits me perfectly. But yeah, that is all the projects. Um, just to kind of talk you through my project cycle personally, Right now, I kind of have it so I cut my pieces through the week, um, and then I kind of sew usually the first garment about Friday evening, and then sew most of the day Saturday, and then do all of my hand sewing finishing on Sunday on both the garments, and that seems to work really well for me. So I'm doing about two full garments a weekend, which is pretty crazy, but we're still in quarantine here in Seattle. So, um, I mean, by the time this video goes up, We'll hopefully be less in quarantine, but we've just been such in quarantine that I may as well like learn how to sew really well and get really good at it. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, definitely check out my channel. I do a lot of vintage thrifting and sewing stuff. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, definitely hit that subscribe button and stick around. I'll see you next time.